fine viewers of Internet World, welcome to my belly button. <laughs> this camera's monopod is resting in my belly button right now. Anyway, uh, behind me is Ragnar, my 1969 Volkswagen Beetle that I am semi-restoring to give away to one of you. The link is in the video description below. Do not fall for the scam bots and YouTube comment sections pretending to be me or other creators. If you haven't already figured out by the title of this video, I am painting the beetle today. And if you're new and you like to get caught up on the last video where I did some body work on it, up above my head is actually a link to that. This is incredible how smooth all this stuff turned out. I learned my lesson when I sprayed the epoxy primer the first time around on this thing because I didn't wax and grease the back where I stuck the tape and I ended up blowing off my window mask in the booth. So I had to like pinch the paper and hold it so I wouldn't get any overspray in here. Not that it matters, but. Tape, it's tape, but it's also made out of paper. So it's more like taper than anything. It's taper paper. It's astonishing how large the inside of such a small car is. I mean, it's kind of a small car. This thing's pretty tall. This looks terrible. It's getting hot in this thing, like real fast. Since these hood hinges look like absolute trash because the paint's all peeling on them, I'm actually gonna remove them because they're gonna get sandblasted and repainted a different color. Look how terrible the paint job was on this. Hopefully mine doesn't turn out like that. I have no idea why I didn't remove those before. This makes it so much easier to mask this off. I summoned the angel of food cakes. I needed some assistance getting this taped in time. It's already three o'clock in the afternoon. I've been taping since I got here. I still gotta paint this. This thing is such a funny shape. I gotta try to get this thing in the booth and started before Fred leaves. <laughs> okay, it's several hours later. I did not realize how long this was gonna take to get everything prepped and ready for me to shoot the thing. So Fred is already gone. I have a, a food cake and Charlie's helping with the taping. Cause it's gonna be about probably three hours till I can shoot all this stuff. These are my notes right here that Fred gave me for mixing and stirring. Big emphasis on stirring and also the pressures for the gun. I have to go all the way up the edge where I'm doing the soft edge in the jam since I already painted the jams a couple weeks ago. Just going to line up the adhesive strip with the edge of my yellow tape. That's like my barrier to not get overspray on the jam that's already shot. Car is prepped out. I know I have not filmed much from today, but if I film stuff and screw around with these cameras, I'm not going to get any work done and I don't want to screw this up. I'm concentrating more on the work I'm doing and less on the video I'm making, unfortunately. It's uh, almost six o'clock in the evening, but it's ready to spray, finally. Finally, finally, finally. I'm gonna do the doors and the fenders tomorrow because there's just too much to try to pack in the booth all at once and I don't want the hose slapping something that's freshly painted. My sealer coat is done. Everything's sprayed out. I ran out halfway through a sealer, so I had to steal some of Fred's. But I'll, I'll buy him another can.
I got one coat of sealer, two coats of the single stage, and I only had one screw up that I can see. And it was kind of my fault, but kind of not really, just something I didn't really realize. The receiver for the paint on the gun, there's a little vent hole in the top. Well, when I was jamming in around the windshield, it vented paint out that little cap hole and I got five little blobs of the single stage on the wiper cowl. So, I'm glad I didn't have pot drip on the roof. Yeah. That would have sucked. Yeah, but I mean, for a first paint job, uh, first complete, that's really bad. Thanks. <laughs> it's like pistachio. Yeah, like vanilla bean. Yeah. Pistachio. Yeah, like a mix of vanilla bean and pistachio. Yeah, it's... I feel like... Piss bean. <laughs> Piss bean. Hello, welcome to the following day. I'm satisfied for my first paint job. Man, there's like almost no orange peel on that. I'm actually really pumped. <laughs> I can't believe how there's almost like no orange peel. Yeah? That looks pretty good. How'd this roof come out? Looks, looks pretty good. I'm so excited how this turned out. You have no idea. Like, I was so nervous when I was spraying this. <laughs> that was actually harder than I thought it would be. That's what she said. Good tape job. So there's a method to staging everything here in the booth and why I'm doing this on two separate days. I have two of the rear fenders right here at the front by the intake filters and they are turned sideways. So I can shoot this. The overspray is then gonna flow out this way. Notice the doors are sideways. So it gives it little surface area for overspray to stick to. Those are mounted hanging up and I tape to the hooks so that way they can't rotate and accidentally smack the back side of the door. So then I shoot those two, shoot these two, and then the last two fenders are in the middle and the exhaust filters are right here. So the airflow is naturally going off to the sides, which takes the little leftover particles of paint away from these to get minimal oversprayage on them. And then the larger surface area is facing the rear. I'm doing this a little bit earlier in the day today while Fred is still here because I want him to be in the booth with me so he can give me tips and pointers on my technique, especially with my spray pattern, on where I can improve different ways to angle and hold the gun while I'm doing it. I didn't get a chance to show you guys this at the end of the day yesterday, but this is what I use to blend the door jams after my final coat of the single stage. Its whole purpose is to essentially melt the two paint together from the one I shot a couple weeks ago and then from the one that was just fresh. That way you can't see a, a line between the two of them. And then I parked the car outside so it can bake in the sun while I'm shooting the other stuff. It's kind of neat seeing these two colors next to each other. It's like this is as green as this is blue. It's a pretty color. I do my final wax and grease. Notice I used a wood screw to hold this thing to the software so that way it doesn't accidentally fall off. It's on there pretty good. It's not going anywhere. Everything has been wiped down now with a solvent-based wax and grease. I'm gonna go over it now with waterborne wax and grease and a microfiber. A quick weather report. It is 96 degrees Fahrenheit, about 36 degrees Celsius, and humidity, about 43% humidity.
just turned the fan off. I don't need that anymore. So if you notice when I was shooting this stuff, Fred came in the booth with me and he gave me some tips and pointers on better gun control when I'm shooting this stuff and it helped a ton. I can already see it on that fender right there. Look how smooth that laid out. I like this paint a lot. This nascent single stage is amazing. It lays out like glass. Look at that. There's like, there's like no orange peel. There's no dirt nibs. At least on this one. That is wild. I'm, I'm kind of proud. I gotta be at least a little bit proud of myself. I'm like, I'm so happy. I was super nervous about these parts up here because they're like really thin. There's no runs. No, I had no runs at all on anything while I was shooting this. I mean, I'll, I'll spill a see better too when I get it in the sunlight. And these back fenders, well, these are actually the front fenders, but yeah, I'm happy about that. Couple little dirt nibs right there, tiny, tiny ones. For this being my first paint job, it wasn't as scary as I thought it was going to be. Keep this in mind though. This is not a metallic, it's not a pearlescent, it's not a candy. It's a single stage and it's an easy color. This is about as easy as it gets. So even though it turned out well, I can't toot my horn too much because this was this was an easy paint job. I owe some credit to this gun I borrowed from Fred though, the Iwata LPH 400. It's the same gun that I used on the go-kart frame. So I have experience with that one now. So it's been two days since I shot everything. It is the day that I'm posting this video right now. All of the pieces are inside the shop ready to be assembled, but I'm not going to because it's gotta go back into the booth. Cause I have a ton of Rhino liner, bed liner to spray. The underside of all of these body panels, the wheel wells in this rocker panel up to the very first line above where the green is at, just a little above that where it's all jagged from the tape are going to be coated. And I want to do this for you guys just because I know someone is going to ask this. I'm going to bring this outside into the sunlight. That way you can get a little bit better uh, of a look at the color and texture and all that stuff because I know I'm going to get a lot of questions about it. So I want you guys to see this. It's being filmed in 4K. I, don't, I think I'm putting the video up in like 2 or 3K though. But uh, I want you guys to see the texture because I'm just shocked at how minimal the orange peel is. And that has nothing to do with me. That's just this paint. Because I'm by all means a absolute novice at painting. And I am just so pleased. This is not sponsored either. I bought the paint for the car. I'm just, I'm really shocked at how well this sprayed out. As far as the color goes, I'm gonna put it next to this red Silverado I'm reviewing this week. So you can see it is really green. Since red is opposite of green on the color spectrum, I thought this would give you guys a better idea. It's a really cool color. It's not white, even though it's called Toga white. So this garage door is white and this is the fender. See, it's, it's green. Now that the bodywork is almost done on this thing, it needs to get into paint soon. So hopefully in the next week or so, I'll be able to start reassembling this, but I think I have another video planned for you next after a review and, and then I'll get to work. Okay? Okay. So I'll see you guys soon with another video. Bye.